My name is Steve Upple. I lead All Nations Church in Wolverhampton and a growing family of churches around the UK. It's a huge privilege for me to be able to share with you uh, today. Uh, I, I want to speak to us today about revival shaking uh, and, and really the simple fact that we are going through an unprecedented shaking in our world. The economy is shaking. Uh, the political world is shaking. People don't really know what to do. Uh, the medical world uh, is shaking. Uh, entertainment has shaken. I mean, films not being made. Hollywood shut down. Uh, it, it is really is unprecedented. At first, I was thinking, oh, they keep using that word unprecedented, but it really is unprecedented. It was interesting to me to listen to the voices coming out of the church uh, over the last few weeks. Some of the words that people are saying is, uh, don't worry, God loves you. And I like that. I like the word, like Psalm 86, verse 15, you, Lord, are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Yes, he loves us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Uh, 1 John 3, 1, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And so that's very true, very right. God loves us. In this season, we need to anchor ourselves on that love. The, one of the other words I've heard coming out a lot is, don't be afraid, fear not. And I like that word as well. Psalm 46 tells us, God is our refuge. I will not fear, the, the, and it lists the sea roaring, the mountains quaking, but God is our refuge. Or 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, the apostle Paul telling Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fear, uh, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So we hear voices in this season saying, God loves you. We hear voices saying, don't be afraid. Another one I've heard a lot is, hey, have hope. Uh, and often quoted is Romans 15 verse 13. And may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do I believe that? Absolutely. We should live rooted in God's love. We shouldn't be afraid. And yes, we should be overflowing with hope in this season. God is good. We are his. He is a good heavenly father. He will hold us steady. We can trust him with our lives. But I would say, I've been asking myself, Lord, what else are you saying? And are these the primary messages that you are saying? And about two weeks ago, I felt the Lord saying to me, it's not my primary message. They are messages. They are right. They are good. They are helpful. We should say yes to them. But here's what I felt the Lord saying, and I'll, I'll do it by reading a scripture to you. And the scripture is from Haggai chapter two, verse six. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace. So the end of the passage is greater glory. The end of the passage is a renewed people. The end of the passage is this revived temple. Today we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, back in that day, the temple was a physical building. Today we are temples of the Holy Spirit. But the beginning of the passage is about a shaking. God's saying, I'm going to shake because there's some things that are there that shouldn't be there. There's going to be a removal of things. You can find the same passage quoted in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. The whole chapter is worth a read. Uh, but from verse 25, it says, See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him uh, who warns us from heaven? And that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And the word once more indicates the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. 
That's his kingdom that cannot be shaken. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. People have asked me, so are you trying to say that God is responsible for the coronavirus? Uh, I'm not saying that. I actually think that there's four pressures at work in our world today. Uh, I think God does discipline, God does shake. So the first pressure is God disciplining and shaking. I think the second pressure is the enemy is raging. We have a very real enemy. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. We see that happening. Uh, thirdly, I think there's consequences to man's sin. And then fourthly, I think the earth, Romans 8, the earth is groaning under the weight of all the sin and the murder and the abuse and everything over the centuries. It's just groaning as four pressures at work. And I'm really not smart enough to tell you which one, where fits, how and when. I do know that God is good. He desires that no one should perish. And so my prayer is, God, we push back, ask for deliverance, stay the hand of the enemy and end to the virus. But I cannot deny that the world is being shaken. And that shaking, I think God will work out his purposes in that time. So yes, God loves us. We shouldn't fear. We should be filled with hope. But we should also be awake to the fact that God is shaking. And the picture in my mind's eye, imagine somebody asleep and it's urgent that they be awakened. Maybe the house is on fire. Uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody else has hurt themselves in another room. And so you speak to that person to awaken them, but they don't reply. They don't respond. They're in a deep sleep. So what do you finally do? You walk up, put a hand on the shoulder and you shake them. And when you shake them, it's more likely that they will awaken. I believe that the Lord has been trying to get the attention of followers, disciples, churches for a long time. But it's been easy to do what we do. We do our Sunday program. We do our midweek. Uh, and yet so many other things have crept in that are not him. And he wants to strip those away and bring us into the place. A, a beautiful bride, as Ephesians 5 speaks about, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, the Father is preparing such in the church today. At the end of March, uh, Anne Calvert uh, sent me a text, and I want to read it to you. I got a permission to use it uh, while I was speaking. So it says this, God keeps talking to me about everything being stripped back and coming back to the heart of worship. And she says, I saw a giant sieve over the nations this morning. There is a massive sieving happening during the shaking. Only a remnant will remain. A pile of stones remain in the sieve and we join with the rock of ages. And if we stay strong, faithful, the, sh the stones are then shaped and honed and polished, refined in the fire, pure stones joining the cornerstone. And then she quotes Amos 9, 9. For I will command and I will shake the people of Israel among all the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve and not a pebble will reach the ground. I, I know God as father. I do love that relationship. I know he is for me and not against me. But I also believe we need to know that he is a good father. If you read the whole of Hebrews 12, he will bring discipline as a good father. He will shake, he will awaken. His purposes will unfold on the earth. Will you be awake at this time? Will you realize that he's shaking, ready to awaken? In um, Romans 13, verses 11 and 12, it says, and do this understanding the present time. So this was Paul speaking back then. But it's so appropriate for us now. He says, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. It, it, it pains me, sometimes frustrates me that so many Christian people's lives can look so similar to those who are not followers of Christ. 
whether it's sexual sin, the love of entertainment, uh, living with materialism and idolatry, those things in our lives that can so easily come. Uh, and I, I'm not perfect. I battle those things myself. Uh, I can easily succumb to the lullaby of entertainment, give myself to it, and then realize I'm falling asleep here spiritually. I want to pray that we'd be awakened to hear what God is saying. I heard the testimony of an Iranian family that had escaped from Iran. Uh, if you know there's great persecution for the church in Iran, this family had moved to America, managed to get a green card to stay there. Uh, and it was a good thing for them because in Iran, uh, they could be imprisoned, persecuted, even killed. Uh, the wife was in danger. If she was caught, she could be raped. It's a horrible situation for the people. So they're now living in America, they're safe. And one day the wife says to the husband, I want to move back to Iran. And he's shocked and he's like, why? And she said, there is a satanic lullaby here and it's putting me to sleep. Isn't that startling? And that family did move back. She would rather live under the risk and the threat of death and persecution than be spiritually asleep. There is a shaking going on and its purpose is to awaken the church to God's voice and to surrender to him. So what's the application for us? Wake up, uh, say to the father like Samuel said, do you remember the story in uh, 1 Samuel 3? I won't read it. Uh, young boy and the Lord speaks to him at night, but he doesn't know the Lord's voice. So he runs to Eli and said, did you call me? And Eli says, no, it happens three times. Isn't it interesting, Eli the prophet didn't know God's voice. In that same passage, it says Eli's eyes grew dim. They were natural, but it was spiritual as well. It also says that the word of the Lord was scarce in that day. It was a sleepy environment to be in. In the midst of that, God speaks. The prophet doesn't recognize it, but the boy is hearing it, but doesn't know what to do with it. And his final response is to say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. And I would say that might be your response today. Say, Lord, okay, there's a shaking, it's unprecedented. And I think an unprecedented shaking demands an unprecedented response from the church. A wholehearted yes to him. So you may just simply say today, as we close it with a bit of worship, say, Holy Spirit, I say yes. Speak whatever you want. I have a big, big yes to you to do what you want me to do with my life.
Yeah.